Hey guys, I'm TJ, and uh, I've got your Connect lesson for the weekend of August 30th. A couple things before we jump into Matthew 14. So if you uh, want to take some time to grab a Bible, make sure you've got that in front of you. Uh, one, you probably saw this last week with Pastor Jeff. We are back in person for worship starting September 27th. Praise the Lord, we're coming back. Uh, so we're super excited about the opportunity to gather for worship again. Uh, secondly, be on the lookout for some plans for uh, for our plans uh, for for this fall. Uh, we're going to be sending something out soon, so be on the lookout for that as well. And then for high school students, your uh, high school leadership application is due Sunday, August 30th, so make sure uh, you get that in. All right, so like I said, we're going to jump into Matthew 14. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, verses 22 through, it's really 36. I'm going to just kind of cover uh, 22 through 31, but um, before we jump into that, I don't, I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, by the time you watch this, both of these storms are going to be, uh, uh, have passed, and uh, Marco has been pretty much downgraded, if you know what I'm talking about, uh, tropical storm slash maybe hurricane Marco um, has been downgraded, but for the first time ever, like this is the most 2020 thing ever, right, is to have two tropical systems hit the Gulf Coast at the exact same time. That's never been done before, as far as we know, like they've been recording and tracking hurricanes for over 100 years, and this is the first time ever, and why not? Why not 2020? Why not just have two crazy tropical storms come and hit the Gulf Coast at the exact same time? And it looks like they're even gonna hit like the exact same area within like a, a, a two day, maybe less than that span. It was just, just super crazy, right? Um, you know, I, I don't know if you've watched the, the, the wildfires that have been out in California. I saw a sign this week that said, uh, make sure to wash hands uh, and make sure to, you know to, to wear a mask and then half the sign had like a flame coming up the side and then there's a fireball uh, just behind it where it's just kind of this this idea that like you know what really doesn't matter we're all just gonna die anyway right it's just total 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 chaos right and that's kind of what we're gonna see here today in, in Matthew 14 like what, what 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 really happens is we don't we don't have control and that's that's what causes the most the most fear right whether it's whether it's wacky weather or it's the just ine inevitable storms of, of life, um, those things can kind of seem out of control, and that's what causes, that's what causes the chaos. So um, if you've got your Bibles, again, go to Matthew 14. We're going to look at uh, Matthew 14, 22 through 36, um, on the heels of Jesus feeding the 5,000, which is what Morgan covered uh, this past weekend. He immediately, is what verse 22 says, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. This is Jesus, right? So he feeds the 5,000. Now all of a sudden he's just like, all right, hey, you guys go on ahead. Uh, I'll dismiss the crowds. I'll take care, take, take care of everything. He's actually going to do something else with Jesus. There's always like this lesson within the lesson, right? Keep reading with me in verse 23. After he dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. He's modeling what it looks like to be alone and in prayer. Jesus, this is how Jesus got, like, got re re uh, recouped or rejuvenated. Um, you know, he, he didn't do that in the ways we find rest, right? Where we just kind of veg out and watch some TV or, you know, I need a little bit of me time or, you know, I go on a run or whatever, whatever it is. Like he, he sought time with God alone. And that's where he he found his he found his he found his strength. So he models that for us. Like I said, that's not really the main point here. It's just a lesson with inside uh, the lesson. Uh, but keep reading, verse twenty four. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And now that means that there was probably a a, a pretty bad storm that had, that had come upon the sea at this time. And in verse twenty five, and in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. It wasn't a ghost, right? And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. It's one of the most common used phrases in, in scripture, if not the most, right? It's do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold, uh, took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you have a little faith. 
<laughs> why did you, you doubt? There's really three things in this particular story that are, that are, that are terrifying. Um, one is you have the darkness, right? Like darkness just is constantly scary. You're like, it doesn't matter where you are. If you're walking around your, ho your home at night, uh, you hear like just like the cracks or whatever, the, the, the creaking or the shifting of the house. Like you're just all automatically like, who's there? Who was there? Who, what was that? Right? So dar darkness just in general isn't fun. Uh, to add it on top of that, they're out in the sea. And in literature, a lot of times, historic literature especially, like the sea just, it just uh, communicates this idea of total chaos because nobody can control the sea. And then the third thing is the weather. Nobody can control the weather, especially on the Sea of Galilee. Like you had storms just constantly just popping up and just, uh, I mean, out of nowhere. And it would just catch people off guard and they couldn't do anything. So it was like constantly like, we're, like, we're doomed, we're going to die. And that's kind of how... Uh, maybe the disciples felt here when they're when they're in the boat. Um, like again, these are we don't have any control over over these things. So here comes Jesus, um, walking in the dark, on the water, in the middle of the storm, calmly. Like I, I mean, think about that, right? Like th this, it's just revealing his power and his sovereignty or his control over all over all life and in verse 27 that's why he says he says don't don't be afraid there's no need to be afraid he's a stop like translated it's basically hey stop freaking out it's me it's okay i got this i'm in control and his peace transcends all the chaos and so in verse 20 28 through 31 verses 28 through 31 peter steps out of the boat right he's like all right if it's you call and i'm, I'm coming to you that's how the faith he showed in that in that in that in that moment um, but he starts seeing the kind of the chaos and the wind kind of swarm around him. Probably the waves are really high. Um, and he begins, to, he begins to sink. And Jesus says, oh, you a little faith. Why'd you, why'd you doubt? Again, translated, I, I wrote this down in my Bible. I heard this in a sermon, I think, from Pastor Travis um, maybe last year. But, oh, you a little faith is, is like translated like, hey, you, you who want control. Like you, you who want to control everything, I'm, I'm right here. And Jesus is, is in control. That's kind of the main idea we're looking at. Jesus is in control. Like, isn't that, isn't that like us? Like, we get so caught up with everything just swirling around us, right? Maybe it's, it's, it is, you know, storms and weather and those things. And, you know, we had a tornado come through Dallas last year in the middle of October out of nowhere. And that's, that causes fear because we don't control those types of things. But take that a little further with, with the life storms, with, with everything that we've got going on in our life right now. Like, uh, you know, we just, we get caught up in that. We forget maybe who Jesus actually is, or we doubt that he's actually working in the middle of the storm, especially with things we, we can't control. Because we, we love, we love control. And the only thing, you probably heard this before, the only thing we really can control is, is our response. So if you want, I want you to take, take some time, write down just the things that are out of your control right now. And I'll, I'll help you with this list. Um, one of those things is like virtual school, right? This year is not how you thought it was going to be. We talked about the, the, senior, the, the seniors, the class of 2020. What about the senior class of 2021? You're kind of facing the same thing of like, this is not how I wanted this to go. Maybe you're an athlete. Maybe you're a football player. And yeah, your season may be starting. It's going to just be d different. Some of you have, have had your seasons canceled. Like that's not, that's not what you expected, but you can respond because you're given an opportunity maybe now to respond by glorifying God. A parent losing a job, right? Like that's, that's stressful. That's something that you can't really control. Uh, maybe it's, uh, maybe, it's just, well, let's just talk about the virus, right? The, a, a, or a sickness or a disease, something else other than COVID-19, right? Those things enter into our life. And what we have, we have the opportunity is, well, with the COVID-19, you have the opportunity to love your neighbor. Maybe it's something else where it's like, well, now like my entire world's been flipped upside, upside down. What am, I, what, what, what am I supposed to do? God, are you, really, are you really in this? Are you really here? And Jesus gently tells us and reminds us, and this is what he says here in the passage. I'm right here. No need to doubt. I'm right here. And we can trust him. Because Jesus is in control, and he's in control of, over all uh, of life's storms. He's in control over all of life's storms.
So you're about to, you may watch this as a group and um, you're gonna spend some time discussing or maybe uh, you may watch this alone. Um, here's a question I want you to think about before, uh, before we're done is this. How does knowing Jesus has full authority over everything bring comfort to you? How does knowing Jesus has full authority over all things bring comfort? All right, love you guys and uh, we'll see you soon.